would like to Amen. We'd like to take the opportunity to welcome each and every one to our Bible study, a place where Jesus reigns, where Amen. we grow, where we develop, and where our well-being is in the Word of God. We are humbled and honored to Amen. have Pastor Gabriel as our teacher. We thank God for his life. We thank God for the anointing and the increase of the Holy Spirit upon his life. We Amen. are honored and humbled to have such an anointed man in the house. So Amen. my brothers and my sisters, I I hand over to our brother, our pastor. Amen. Can somebody just mute there, wherever that is there? All right. Thank you so much. I thought there's a lot something going on, but welcome. Well, we give over to Pastor Gabriel. Welcome, sir. Thank you very much, Bishop. Thank you for this opportunity again to um, share the word of God this evening. And um, I hope we've all had a wonderful bank holiday. Amen. And a um, wonderful weekend. God bless you, every one of us, everyone joining us from all around the world, you know, may the Lord bless you. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Bishop. Thank you for this opportunity. And um, one of the things that this, this, has, um, this is doing in my life is help me even grow personally. Thank you very much, Bishop. And you know, we give God the glory for our Lord Jesus Christ, our King, the Prince of Peace, the most righteous and the most holy. We give him all the glory. We thank him for this opportunity. Um, since we've been looking at these same um, principles of working in the power of God, you know, God has been absolutely faithful. He's been teaching us, and we, we can see how we've been growing. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. And um, just um, a recap on um, what we've been doing. I think the last thing we did regarding what the Holy Spirit does in us. We're talking about what the Holy Spirit does in us. I don't know whether I'm loud enough. Is it loud enough? Praise God. So we've been talking about what the Holy Spirit does in a believer. That means the vital work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Amen. He works in us, transforming us every day to be conformed to the image of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. And then um, the last thing we looked at um, on the 70s we talked about, the last one was we talked about how the Holy Spirit vitalizes our mortal bodies. Amen. And um, who can remember the chapter, the first um, passage we look at on that? Romans 8, verse 10 to Amen. 11. Uh, hallelujah. Romans 8, chapter 10 and 11. And it reads, it says, if Christ be in you, Hallelujah. Everybody say, if Christ be in me. If Christ. Amen. It says here, if Christ be in you, though the body is dead because of sin. Hallelujah. It says, but the spirit is life because of the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit gives it life. Because of righteousness. Hallelujah. And if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken, which means he will vitalize your mortal bodies by the Holy Spirit that dwells in you. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So we know that the Spirit of God lives in the, in the heart of every believer. He lives in us. Amen. Have you ever asked yourself what it really means for the Holy Spirit to be to live in you amen have you ever asked yourself that question you know sometimes we could be very passive about what the bible teaches the bible, oh yes i'm the temple of the holy spirit we can say that and say that and say that but we might not actually come to the knowledge of what that really really means amen praise the lord jesus christ or we might not um, we we can have it as a cliche as something that we just say but what does it really mean? You know, 
the Bible talks about how Jesus Christ, when he was, when he walked on earth, the Bible says how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good. Amen. Because God was with him. So we see our Lord Jesus Christ, how he was filled with the Holy Spirit and the things that he did because he was filled with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. A lot of us might say because Jesus Christ is God, obviously, that was why he's able to do those things. No, Jesus Christ never did, never functioned as, um, as almighty God on earth. In fact, he, 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 he functioned as a man and he too had to be filled with the Holy Spirit, just like every one of us was filled with the Holy Spirit. And because of that, he went about doing good, though he is God, amen? But he had also to be filled with the Holy Spirit as a man, hallelujah. So one of the things we should, when we look at the life of Jesus Christ, amen? When we look at the life of our Lord Jesus Christ, we have to look at it in a way that Jesus Christ was showing how divinity can walk in humanity. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. And there were things that Jesus Christ began to tell us as a result of this. Let's open our Bibles to John. I'm just doing a recap anyway. Um, John chapter 14. Amen. And let's look at um, verses 12 and 13. It says, Very, very, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. Amen. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Amen. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So we see here, Jesus Christ, this is what it means to be filled with the Holy Spirit. This is what it means for the Holy Spirit to live in us. This is what it means to be quickened by the Holy Spirit. He says, very, very, I say unto you, that he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall you do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. So we as believers now, Jesus Christ is telling us that as a result of this, because we believe in his name, hallelujah, and we all know that when we believe in his name, the Bible says to those who, lead, who, who receive him, he gave the power to become the sons of God. Amen? So now you become a son of God or daughter of God, filled with the Holy Spirit. And Jesus is saying, the works that I do, you shall do even greater works than this. Amen? Hallelujah. You see, what we see in the scripture, the reason why we're not seeing this manifest in, our, in, in these days, because people look at it, they just read about it. They think these things are just things read and to read and just get excited about it and just not follow up on it. But until we begin to act on what the father says in his word, on what Jesus Christ says in his word, then we'll begin to see a manifestation of this in our world, amen? Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So as a believer, we see in Romans 8, 10, that if the spirit of him that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in us, he that raised Christ from the dead will also quicken our mortal bodies. Amen. So what sickness doing there? What's, what's sickness doing there? What's poverty? What's depression doing in your life? You see, this is the reason why we as believers, we overcome all these things, amen? Because we have the spirit of God living in us. We should not settle for depression. We should not settle for diseases, for sickness. We should not settle for 
anything that would oppress us or we should not settle for the devil oppressing our lives. No way. We have to say in the name of Jesus, I command you to stop right now because right now I am the temple of the Holy Spirit, redeemed, cleansed, and sanctified by the blood of Jesus. Amen. Many, many people might say, oh, but you need to try hard. No, you need to believe. <laughs> Amen. You need to believe. That's all you need to do. He says, you believe in these things, it will work for you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So we see here that, um, we see here that the Holy Spirit works in us. That's why Jesus Christ says, these signs shall follow them that believe. Let's open our Bibles to Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. And I'm reading from verses, verses 17, if you're there, 17, from verses 17. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, Mark 16, verse 17 says, And these signs we follow those who believe. Amen. In that name, they will cast out demons. Hmm. They will speak with new tongues. Amen. Carry on, please. The and they will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. And um, can you carry on reading to 20, please? I'm oh, sorry. So then, after the Lord had spoken to them, he, he was received up unto heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And they went out and preached everywhere. The Lord working with them and confirming the word through the accompanying signs. Amen. Amen. You see that? He says, so then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. He says, and they went forth. Amen. I want you to pick that, that bit up here. He says, they went forth. They didn't just have that cliche to say, hey, these signs will follow us, and they just kept on giving glory. Oh, yes, God, these signs are going to follow us. No. The Bible says, after the Lord had promised them this, amen, the Bible says, they went forth. Amen? You see, when we, when we walk, when we believe, or when we have faith, faith is for doing. It's acting on the word. Hallelujah. It's not something to do, because you know, sometimes before we act on the word, we're thinking, oh, you know what? This thing, ah, is it definitely going to work? You know, this is the question that runs through the mind of people, doubts and all those things. But we cannot do that if we're going to walk in faith, if we're going to see these signs to happen. We have to take a bold step of faith. So it has to be on the basis of the word of God that you are acting upon. Amen? I remember this year, um, January, the Holy Spirit is telling me that. It began to tell me that now you have to go out and you have to begin to um, go out and reach out in town. And um, all that was coming to my mind was, really? Standing out there, preaching? Imagine all the people that will come and attack me and say this and want to, you know, this stuff. All that was going through my mind. But I had to make a choice. I had to make a choice on, you know what? I'm going to respond to the word of God. Amen. It's either I respond to the word or I allow those negative situations that is contrary to the word of God to hold me back. Amen. So I had to go out knowing that the Holy Spirit lives in me, knowing that I am not alone and knowing that I am going and I'm being backed by the word of God. Amen. So what it really means for the Holy Spirit to be in you is that when you are ministering, when you're preaching or when you're ministering, 
depending on how the Holy Spirit is leading you, amen, hallelujah, depending on how the Holy Spirit is leading you, know that you are not on your own. You've got the greater one on the inside of you that is in, that, that will be with you and that will lead you and that will direct you on what to do. Amen. So we always have to be conscious of the one that lives in us. The Bible says, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So he says here, he says, so then, I mean, so, and, and they went forth and preached everywhere. Amen. The Lord walking with them. You see, the Lord was walking with them. Hallelujah. He says, confirming. So the Lord is the one that confirms his word. Confirming the word with signs following. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. When you act on the word of God, when you follow God's direction, when you allow the Holy Spirit to lead you, you can never be disappointed. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. But do you really, really trust that? Would you be able to trust the Lord with your life, even in the midst of trouble, to be able to step out in faith? Amen. To step out in faith and trust the Lord. Amen. That's all he asks us to do, to step out in faith and trust him. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. This is what the Bible says about us. Can we look at Luke chapter 10 and verses 19? Are we all there? Says, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. So you have to you know this is a reassurance that God is with us. He lives in us by the Holy Spirit and is there. Amen. He's giving us authority over all the weapons of the wicked. Amen. He's giving, us the, he's giving us power over all the weapons of the wicked. No matter what the enemy throws at us, God has given us power. He says he has given us, behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. I want us to look at the situation that happened to Paul in the book of Acts. Acts chapter 28, let's open our book. Acts chapter 28, verses 3 to 6. Anybody wants to read Dickness Maxine? The Amplify, please. <laughs> Amen. Pastor G, doesn't please, you... sorry, sorry, Pastor G. I'm still trying to put Samuel to bed, so please excuse me. Okay, no problem. <laughs> I, I can read it, Pastor Gabriel. All right, I'm reading. What did you say? Three to six, right? From the Amplified. Yes, please. But when, but when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, a viper crawled out because of the heat and fastened itself on his hand. When the natives saw the creature hanging from his hand, they began to say to one another, undoubtedly, this man is a murderer. And though he has been saved from the sea, justice, the avenging goddess, has not permitted him to live. Verse five. Then Paul simply shook the creature off into the fire and suffered no ill effects. Verse six. But they stood watching and expecting him to swell up or, swell up or suddenly drop dead. But after they had waited a long time and had seen nothing unusual happen to him, they changed their minds and began saying that he was a god. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, this is what it means when the Bible says, if the spirit of him that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he that raised Christ from the dead shall quicken your mortal bodies by the Holy Spirit that dwells in you. 
this is not to say that when you see, when you see a snake, you go and pick it up and let it bite you. That's not what it's saying here. But in the situation of Paul, we see that this was not something he planned. He was basically trying to pick up a wood and there was a viper in there and he beat it. Amen. But you see, Paul knew who was living in him. Hallelujah. You see, when you know something, there's no need to fear. Imagine today, in today, when the, the snake bites you, hey, everybody's running, dog, dog, hey, everybody's running helter skelter. But the Bible says he shook it off himself. That's what he did. He, he shook it off himself, dropped it in the heat, and never even bothered, you know? And even the people began to look at him and they were waiting for him to swell up and die. Amen? But because he had the power of the Holy Spirit, you know, if we as the children of God today can begin to operate like those, uh, as those that are filled with the Holy Spirit and that the Holy Spirit lives in us, you know, this, this would show, what, what it would do is that the world will see us in a different way, amen? Because the world will begin to see us that these are a different breed of people because these people, God lives in them. Amen? You know what it means for God to live in you? The Bible says when they carried the Ark of the Covenant, wherever the children of Israel went, when they carried the Ark of the Covenant, they carried God's presence with them. And when God's presence was with them, they won every single battle. Amen? Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. But you... The Bible says you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. You know, we are supposed to be a wonder to the world. The Bible says Peter's, Peter's shadow, or was it Paul's shadow, um, healed people. Handkerchief from his body healed people. Did you know in the Old Testament, Elisha, in, on his grave, what happened was that somebody was sick and they placed this man thinking he was going to die. They placed him in, uh, on Elisha's grave. But the Bible says because of this, you see, his bones, the presence of God was still in his bones and he healed the man that was about to die. This was Elisha that has been dead for so many years. Amen. And that's in the old covenant. How much more us in the new covenant? Amen. But these things are not being spoken of as much in our churches anymore. People, people are scared to lay hands on the sick because they, because they feel that a demon is going to jump on them. <laughs> you know, they tell you, oh, lay hands suddenly on no man. But if we look at that scripture, it wasn't talking about laying hands to, to heal the sick. It was talking about laying hands in ordaining people. That you don't just put anybody into leadership. You have to be very careful in laying hands on people. Don't lay hands suddenly on people and put them in leadership. You have to be very careful. It wasn't talking about, it wasn't talking about um, laying hands in order to heal the sick. Because we know we have eternal life in us. We have the spirit of God in us. And what Jesus Christ paid for on that cross. He paid, for, he paid for our sickness and diseases, amen? So you don't have to be scared in praying for people. Hallelujah, praise the Lord Jesus Christ. When you use the name of Jesus, people are, people, people are delivered. Hallelujah, praise Jesus. So we can see here that when Paul had gathered a bundle of stick, he laid them on the fire. A viper crawled out because of the heat and fastened itself in his hand. Then Paul, in verse 25, says, then Paul simply shook the creature off into the fire and suffered no ill effect. Hallelujah. That's the miraculous power of God. Amen. We are supposed to be walking in the miraculous power of God in, our, in this day. Amen. This is... This is part of the things that we as the body of Christ on the fact that the Holy Spirit lives in us. We're supposed to be walking in this power. 
We can't wait and wait and say, I'm, I'm, and say I'm waiting, I'm waiting. No, let us step out in faith. Let us step out in faith in praying for people in the name of Jesus. And we will see God transform people's life. Amen. I remember, um, it must, must have been two, three weeks ago, we were having, I was having a meeting with some of my friends. And then we had somebody, um, it was somewhere in Uganda. And he contacted us while we were on this meeting. And he said that um, his waist, I think he must be the joints on his waist. He says he just, he's been, have given him problems for a few weeks. He just could not do as much as he could. So he said, because after we had spoken the word of God, we now said, okay, if there anybody sick, let's pray, anybody that wants to pray. And he decided, he yeah, said, okay, yes, please, can you pray for me concerning this? And as soon as he said that, and they got me to pray. And I didn't even pray. I just said, you know, you that pain, I mean, whatever pain it is in that man's body, the Bible says the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two edges. So piercing to the dividing us on our soul and spirit and joints and marrow. He says actually the joints on the body. I said even to the joints, the joints, they respond to the word of God. I said in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I command you that joint pain to be gone now in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You know, and that's all I said. And um, as soon as we finished praying, and they said, okay, can you do things that you couldn't do? And then um, he tried it. He says, but I still feel it. I'm still feeling the pain. But we just said, you know, whatever it is, we know God has healed you. About five minutes into the, while we were still having a meeting, he just says, oh, Lord, I said, we're about to finish the meeting. He says, I've got a testimony. Look, I right now as I am, I'm actually doing things that I could not do. I'm literally doing it now. I just want to give this testimony and give the glory on to Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. So, so I just want you to know that we, when we use the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus is powerful and you know? We're filled with that spirit, the spirit of God. Do not look at yourself as an ordinary man. You're not an ordinary man. You're not a natural man. You're a spiritual man. Amen? And as a spiritual man, you cannot afford to leave or try to start thinking like the people of the world anymore. There are something, there are things have changed in your life. Let's, let's open our Bibles to 1 Corinthians Chapter 2, I want to show us some things. First Corinthians chapter 2, just bear me a minute, please. Praise the Lord. Amen. Sorry. <laughs> Praise the Lord. First Corinthians chapter two. I want to read, actually, I'm going to read it from the King James. And um I want, yes, let's begin from no, chapter nine. I mean, verses nine. It says, but as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Amen. It says, but God has revealed them unto us by his spirit. Amen. So we see that there is a work of the Holy Spirit in the life of every believer. And that work as well includes the fact that the Holy Spirit reveals some things to us. Amen. He reveals the things, he reveals things that God has prepared for us. Amen. So he says, but God has revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. 
So we see here as well that as a child of God, it is possible for us to know what the deep things of God is. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. We're able to know. You see, the reason why the church don't look for, don't search the, thing, the deep things of God, because they don't believe they can, they, God can show it to them. But God is telling us here that he can show us the deep things of God. But how many of us have actually asked God, Lord God, you say you can show us the deep things of God. What are these deep things that you want to show us as believers? You see, we need to begin to put them into practice, put what we see in the word into practice. Amen. So he says here, he says, yeah, the deep things of God. He says, for what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man, which is in him. Even so the things of God knoweth no man, but the spirit of God. So no man knows the things of God except the spirit of God. So because the spirit of God lives in us, so it's possible for us to know the things of God. Hallelujah. Then he goes further. He says, now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we may know the things that are freely given to us by God. So there are things that are freely given to us by God. Hallelujah. And these things that are freely given to us by God, it can be, is revealed to us by his spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Then he goes, what, um, it says, which things also we speak. So it means that these things, we can, we have the ability to speak them as well. Amen. He says, this thing we speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches. You have a man in the United Kingdom and a man in Uganda, and he's prayed in the name of Jesus, and with no contact physically, just by speaking words which man's wisdom doesn't teach, but which the Spirit teaches. Amen? Hallelujah. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual, and you see a man's life being transformed. So one thing I want us to know is that when the Holy Spirit speaks to us, and when the Holy Spirit is using us, we shouldn't expect it to be wisdom of a man or things we learned in primary school or in secondary school or at university. These are things that is taught by the Spirit of God. Amen. And sometimes those things, when you listen to them and the Holy Spirit is instructing you to do these things, you're probably thinking, oh, I don't, is this me? Uh, no, 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 I must be thinking, this, this must be my head. But these are things that are coming from within, from inside of you. The Holy Spirit is instructing you, the Holy Spirit is telling you, you know what, when you get home today, you need to pray. You need to lay hands on your child. When you get home, get an anointing oil and anoint your head. There's a reason for it. Sometimes the Holy Spirit does all these things, but you probably be like, oh, well, it's just me. And sometimes we're passive about these things. Amen? He says, but the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned, amen? Sometimes when the Holy Spirit has given you an idea, then you go and ask somebody that is not a believer, oh, you know, this thing is coming to my mind. And I just think, what do you think I should do? And you give them and you, you tell them what the Holy Spirit has spoken to you about, but you're not saying it's the Holy Spirit, you're just saying it's an idea. Then they're saying, mm, no, 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 I don't think, be, I don't, that's, that's not logical, that's not right. Why don't you do it this way? This is how it's done. And the Holy Spirit has given you an instruction to go ahead and do something. Amen? Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, this is why how some of us, we miss the Holy Spirit when the Holy Spirit speaks to us. Hallelujah. We should be able to hear from the Holy Spirit and act on those things that the Holy Spirit tells us and we do. Like when I was giving my testimony about being healed from diabetes, you know, I say to, I am the Holy Spirit personally said to me, says, okay, if you believe that I'm, you're healed, what are you waiting for? Are you waiting to see a physical manifestation? Are you waiting to, are you waiting for confirmation physically? Or are you, uh, are you basing 
that you're healed based on what I said in my word? And I said, yes, your word says it. It says, then what are you waiting for? Give your testimony. <laughs> Amen. And he gave me some few scriptures. It says, and they overcame by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. Amen. And I can tell you after then, I've been feeling great. I've been feeling better. My evidence is the word. I can never die of sickness. I can never die of diabetes because the word of God tells me that all Jesus Christ took it upon himself on the cross of Calvary over 2000 years ago. Amen. I either trust the word or I go and start asking, looking for evidence. Oh, okay. Ah, but my side is aching a little bit. Ah, maybe I'm not healed yet. That's what a lot of people do. It's like, oh, because I'm feeling pain. So they're basing their trust on their senses rather than on the word. Amen. The word of God is the word of God is dependable enough for me to trust that I'm, I'm, I'm healed. You see, when we begin to walk in this realm, then we begin to walk in the realm of the spirit because Jesus Christ says, it is the spirit that quickens, the flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. If the word of God is spirit and life and is the word that quickens, I go for the word. <laughs> Amen. I go for the word. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So as a child of God, you cannot afford to live like the, like the world. You cannot live, afford to live like a natural man. A natural man will be looking for evidences in the things of the world. Amen. I'm going towards a different dimension right now this evening, but I don't know why I'm saying this. But I think maybe it's for somebody to hear. You know, faith is not, people, people get faith wrong. I want us to look at Hebrews. Let's look at Hebrews. I will explain this a little bit before I carry on. Hebrews chapter 11. And from verses 3. It says in verses three, if, if um, Brother Arnold can please read, please, sir. Hebrews 11, three. Okay. Yes. <clears throat> By faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. Amen. Amen. I'll read it again. Amen. Again. again. Read it again, please. Read it again. <clears throat> by faith, we understand yes. that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so mm. that the things which are See, were not made of things which are visible. See, it says through faith we understand. We know Hebrews eleven is the faith chapter. Amen. Now it's telling to it's telling us how things work in the world. Amen. He's not talking about cosmos here, which is world. He's talking about aeon. Amen. He says how things has happened over the period of time, amen? So he's talking about the frame of time, how things has happened in the frame of time. He's not talking about the cosmos, he's talking about aeon. So for example, um, I am, um, I'll, I'm just, I'll, I'll, before I explain, just give me a second. Um, when you talk about somebody's biography, from the time he's, he was born, 
until the time he died. Amen. We talk about the length of the time he's lived. So this is what the Bible is saying here. It says, through faith, we understand that the world, that is the period of time, it says, we're framed by the word of God. So every season, people will say, it is your season today. This is your season of your appointment. This is your season of this, you know? It says, all these times, all these seasons, we're framed by the word of God. That's what he's saying. Amen. He says, through faith, we understand that the world was framed by the spoken word of God. That is Rima of God. Amen. He says, so that the things which are seen now, the things that are made manifest, what we see now that is made manifest, he says, were not made of things which actually exist. Amen. He says they were not made of things we do exist now. So basically, you get some people, they, um, all of a sudden, somebody called them and said, told them that, um, and somebody said to them, look, you know what? Um, I'm trying to put it in a very, very, very low. Who is this? What's well, something happening here? Who is, who is that in the background? I think it's a guest, Pastor Gabriel, that came on, uh, Pastor Mark Lewis, and I don't know whose iPhone. So, yeah, they're all muted now. It's okay. Okay. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So, basically, um, I want to use myself as an, exa as an example. Um, somebody said to me a few years ago that we're going to give you a certain amount of money. And as soon as I heard that, I was like, yes. Thank you. Then all of a sudden, I started thinking, you know what? I'm going to buy this. I'm going to buy this. So I began to, I now ask God, Lord, I'm believing for this. But I'm saying I'm believing for this. But meanwhile, my mind is on what that person is going to give me. So my faith was not in him. My faith was more on the thing I'm going to get so that I can get that what I need to get, amen? So basically I'm using something that is materialistic to get something and I'm proclaiming it as faith. So it's not from the word of God, but here he's talking about, he's saying, you see something in the word of God, amen? You have faith in it, hallelujah. And this thing was framed by the word of God that you received, not by the material thing you received. Amen? So if when faith is at work, faith is at work based on the word of God that you have, amen, that the Lord revealed to you and spoke to your heart, nobody has seen it. It doesn't appear to anybody, but it's real in your spirit. Amen. And you base that as truth and you're certain with that and you're confident in that and you're already giving glory to God. That's exactly what happened to Papa Abraham when God revealed to him and said to him, you're going to be the father of many nations. There was no physical evidence, but there was the word of God to hold on to be. That was it. That, that was the title deed. That was the tangible thing Abraham could stand on. And the Bible says he kept on giving glory to God, even though it hasn't happened, but he knew because God had promised him it was going to come to pass. Amen. So many people today, they base their faith more on their job. And they say, okay, yes, I'm going to get this because they get it. Imagine if that job is not there. They won't be able to trust God for what they want to believe in because they feel that that's the job that will sustain them. And nobody, none of us today, our job doesn't sustain us. It's God that sustains us. Amen. Although, yes, we need to work, but God is the one that sustains us. So if we're going to trust God for anything, we have to look to his word. We have to look, like if you want to be healed, if you want to, if you are expecting or believing God for healing, it has to be on the word of God. You have to look at it. The word has to be the basis 
for your supernatural health. The word has to be your basis for your supernatural prosperity because God had already promised it to you and you have to walk through it and you just rest in the word of God. That's what faith is. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So he says, through faith, we understand that the world was framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen, the things which are manifested now that we see right in front of us, first manifested in the realm of the spirit. We saw it there. We thank God for it. Based on the promises from the word of God, we give him all the glory and now we see the manifestation of it. So he does, he says, based on things which are seen, which were not made of things which do appear. In fact, which things that do not appear to us with the physical eyes. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. And guess what? The Holy Spirit is the one that unravels this thing. It says, for we have received this, we have not received the spirit of the world, but we have received the spirit which is of God, that we may know those things that are freely given to us by God. Once the Holy Spirit reveals it to us and it says, this is yours, that is it. You just take it. You give him all the glory and you say, thank you for it. Because the Holy Spirit will give you a word that promises you that thing. And that's it. You got it. You just need to run with it and give glory unto God. And before you know it, as you begin to give glory to God, you will eventually see the manifestation of that thing that you're believing God for. Most people that come for healing, they don't even see their healing. They don't see it in the word. So that's why they don't get it. You pray for them right now. In the name of Jesus, be healed. And you say to them, do you believe the Lord has answered you? They say, I hope so. I hope so. And um, I hope so. I hope so. I hope that the Lord has answered me. You see, hope is not faith. Hope is not faith. Hope sees the future and is waiting for it. But faith sees, faith sees the future and takes it and brings it here now. Hallelujah. Faith is always now. As soon as I pray, I believe I receive it. Thank you, Jesus. I might not have seen it physically, but I know I've got it. Amen. And the Bible says he shall have it, what he has received. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Any question? I have a question. Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, the question is regarding the verse, uh, the Bible verse, uh, Mark 16, 18. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, uh, because I've had, uh, I, I've met some Christians who use that bus. I, I asked somebody why he, uh, actually she was a Christian and I asked her, why did you take the vaccine? So she quoted this verse, uh, Mark 16, 18, and said that even though we take the vaccine, it will, even if it's poisonous, it won't affect us. So I just wanted your thoughts for that. I don't know whether you come across somebody else who has uh, said the same thing. Okay, he's here he's saying, he says, they shall take up serpent and if, he didn't say when. Yeah, and if they drink anything poisonous, it yes. won't happen. Yeah, he didn't say yeah. when. He says yeah. if. You know there's a big difference between if and yeah. when. Yeah. Okay. If. It's not something you deliberately put in your body. Okay. If it's basically, if paraventure, for example, you might, um, you might uh, get a glass of water from the tap. We all drink water from the tap every day because that's the water we drink. But if something mistakenly gets in your water and you don't know about it, Amen. Yeah. And you drink it. The Bible says, in that instance, if you drink any deadly thing, it 
do not hurt you. Because it's not only the vaccine that is dangerous to our bodies. Mm -hmm. Acid is dangerous to our bodies. Mm -hmm. You can't deliberately put acid in your body and say, because the Lord says, <laughs> you know, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but some people have taken the vaccine unknowingly or out of lack of knowledge, right? There's, there's grace for that. But after there are some people, they're that mature enough in the faith that they just feel like, you know what? I don't need a vaccine in my body because I believe if the spirit of him that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in me, he that raised Christ from the dead shall put in my mouth a body by the Holy Ghost that dwells in me. Amen? Amen. That's, that's an individual thing. That's personal to that person because of the time he spent in the word of God and he's able to trust the word of God to help him through the pandemic. Some people um, cannot, um, maybe they've not grown up to that level of faith and they decide to take the vaccine. There is grace for that. God is not gonna send them to hell because they have done that. You understand? But I think we can learn that we can, the word of God is dependable. We can trust the word of God, even to our physical health, and we will see God move for us. We have to be able to come to that level of faith, to be able to trust the Lord, to be able to see that his word. If the Bible says he was wounded for our transgression, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Amen. The Bible says, none of this plague shall come near your dwellings. These are the promises of God to a believer. So we have to take God at his word, or we might as well say, okay, well, I, well, I trust God in some areas, but in this area, I'm still believing God, you know, but we should be able to trust God with all our lives, with our entire life. That's where God wants to get us to. God wants to get us to a place where our total trust is in him. Amen. The Lord says, the Lord is the light. Look, look, at, look, okay, let's look at them. Look, look at them, Psalms 103. Let's look at Psalms 103. This is not just me talking. Psalms 103. Are we all there? Are we all there? It says in from verses one, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Amen. I'm pretty sure we all know what benefits are. <laughs> Amen. It's part of the package. <laughs> Amen. It says, who forgives all our iniquities? who heals all our diseases, who redeems our life from destruction, who crowns us with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies our mouth with good things that our youth is renewed like the eagle. So in our salvation package, when we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, all this is included in the package. Amen. This is not my word. This is God's word. Hallelujah. This is his word. He says, he forgives us of all our iniquities. He heals us. Our well, a lot of people are able to believe that God has forgiven them from their sins. But when it comes to this, the, the he let all our diseases, they say, well, you know, I'm not really sure about that one. But they are very sure about the forgiving of our sins. <laughs> Amen. So this is part of the package. It's part of the package. When we receive salvation, we receive everything. It's not just for forgiveness of sin. Also, our iniquities, it says he forgives us our iniquity, he heals our diseases, he redeems our lives from destruction. Amen? That's part of it. He crowns us with loving kindness and tender mercy, and he satisfies our mouth 
with good things that our youth is renewed like the eagles. Amen. Say to somebody, say to yourself, don't get too old, don't get too old, don't get too old. Because my youth is renewed like the eagles. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. So you can, you can easily say to somebody, if you're older than me, you're too old. <laughs> oh, praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Did I answer your question, sir? Yes, you did. You made it very clear. Yeah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Actually, I'll, I'll call them and now I'll just invite yeah. them. You know, but you know, you don't have to look at them in, in a different way. Like, they're also children of God, like you are. And then, you know, they also grow in. By the time they get to a level of faith, they'll be able to say, you know what, actually, mm, I see this truth here, you know, I see what the word of God is in. And you can also minister to them. Yeah. But already, They've taken the vaccine. It's nothing they can do, but they can reverse it. They don't have to go for the second. They don't have to go for the third. They can just trust the Lord. But they have to want to do it. Amen? It's a choice that they have to make. Sorry, my battery is running low right now. I just need to get my, um, my charger quickly. Bishop, I'll hand over to you while I'm getting my charger, sir. I think one of the biggest challenges that we have in the 20th century at the present moment is that the church of Jesus Christ must live to that capacity that we rely on God completely. And I know that things are out there that is confusing in the natural, but God wants me and you as his sons and daughters to rely on his word, just as the disciples had to rely on God's word. Now in this time and our time, because of technology, and all signs and doctors, we sometimes have an element of doubt that can God still do it? Yes, God can. But you and I have to activate our faith in God. That's our job. The fact that God sent Jesus Christ to die on the cross, we believe that. We believe that he died and he rose and he seated at the right hand of the Father. It's that same faith that took our sons away is the same faith that we have to activate that the Lord is still capable to do mighty things beyond our imagination. But we have to activate our faith based on the word. Now I know science has been brilliant and people believe that, that they, uh, I just heard a guy say this evening on the news in Noel Gallingham. He said, I don't believe Jesus. I don't believe God. And I thought, wow, what an idiot, what a fool. Because he's been so popular in music. He said, I don't believe in Jesus and I don't believe there's a God. And this is what the world believed. But as children of God, who has now the spirit of God, who receive that anointing, we know we are better than them because of the glory of God that now lives in us. We should be 10 times better than the world. Not just in material things, long life, good health, in our sound mind, in the wisdom, in our action, in our character. This is what the Spirit of God wants the church to be. And so we got to allow the Spirit of God that raised Jesus from the grave to activate our spirit in him. Pastor Gabriel, you continue. Unmute yourself, please, sir. Okay, praise God. Um, from what Bishop is just saying, I, I don't want you to expect. There's, I'm not saying that there's no, um, there are no um, people that are Christians that are doctors. But one thing I want us to know is that don't expect a natural man to explain spiritual things to you. Amen. It says, the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of God for their foolishness unto him, neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. You know, don't expect uh, uh, a natural man, somebody that doesn't even believe in the supernatural power of God 
to explain how God can heal you or how God can protect you from COVID. You have to be able to locate it for yourself in the word of God as a child of God and apply that truth to your life and it will work because the word of God works all the time. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Any other question? Any question? Don't be shy now, don't be shy. Sister Ludi is on holiday, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pastor Gabriel. <laughs> Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Is there any element of doubt that you have right now or concerns what the man of God is teaching us or more clarity you want? Please don't be afraid. Pastor Gabriel, you are a very good teacher. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So we're going to go now, and um, I think we're going to be look at um, the next thing we'll be looking at. We've been looking at the Holy Spirit, and um, we're going to start, um, we're just going to do like an introduction. The next thing we will have to look at is prayer, amen? Because if we're going to walk in the principles of the power of God, prayer has to be a very, very important part of our lives. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. You see? It's important as children of God, prayer has to be one of the most important things in our lives as believers. Amen. And then um, I want us to turn our Bibles to John chapter 2. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. First of all, we have, we have to understand the book of John. That John, the book of John, actually... John is trying in, in, in the book of um, the Gospel of John. In that book, he shows us who Jesus Christ is. He shows us that they, um, how Jesus is co-equal with God. Amen. So whenever you see Jesus speak in the book of John or any of the gospel, it's important that we take that very, very, very important. Amen. Hallelujah. So when Jesus Christ is saying something, we have to look at it now. Okay, what's God saying to me right now? Amen. Hallelujah. So here I'm reading from verses 13 of chapter 2. It says, and the Jews' Passover was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Amen. And found in the temple those that sold oxen and sheep and doves and the changer of money sitting. And when he had made a scourge of small cords, he drove them all out of the temple and the sheep and the oxen and poured out the changer's money and overthrew the table and said unto them that sold those, take these things hence, Make not my father's house an house of merchandise. Amen. This was um, this was basically when Jesus Christ went into the temple and um, he saw people selling and um, changing money and doing all sorts, and he literally sent them out of the temple. But if we look at one of the things he said, he said to them that. His father's house is not a house of merchandise. But we see from all that part of the scripture, in that same scripture, in other translated translation, it says, but my father's house shall be a house of prayer. Amen. And this was something that Jesus Christ was speaking to them about before he resurrected. Amen. So he was talking to them at this point about a building that was made with hand. Amen. But if we look at the other translation of the scripture, it says, my father's house shall be called a house of prayer. Amen. 
And if we look at Paul's explanation of what the temple is, he says, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit, amen? So in other words, we have to be a people of prayer, amen? We cannot live, we cannot continue to live our lives without a life of prayer. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Our life should be a life of prayer. In fact, we cannot do anything effective in the spirit without praying. Hallelujah. And our, our, our first prime most example is our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's open our Bibles to Mark chapter 1 and verses 35. Amen. Amen. It says, and in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed. Amen. Mark 1.35. Praise the Lord. It says, Jesus Christ woke up very early in the morning before day. He went out, departed into a solitary place, solitary place, and there prayed. Amen. And if you look at, if you look at, if you look at the next, if you look at the next few verses after that, let's look at verses 36. It says, and Simon and they that were with him followed after him. And when they had found him, they said unto him, all men seek for thee. And he said unto them, let us go into the next town that I may preach there also. For therefore came I forth. Amen. And he preached in their synagogue throughout all Galilee and cast out devils. Amen. So we see here the result of spending time with God. Amen. You see, prayer, it's actually a time of fellowship. It's a time when we fellowship with God. And when I say fellowship, fellowship here is the word used in the Greek word as koinonia. We'll see this word that we'll see this word used in first Corinthians. Second Corinthians chapter 13. Second Corinthians 13 and verses 14. Amen. It says, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. That word communion is the same word for fellowship, is the word koinonia. And what it means is that it means there's a partnership. So when we pray, prayer is not just when we ask God for something. Prayer is also we partnershiping with God in order to see his will and purpose fulfilled here on earth. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So when we pray, it's not just us asking, but it's us actually fellowshipping with God and praying that his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hallelujah. And Jesus Christ showed us a very, very good example of that. You see that God's will was to set men free. God's will is to set men free, is to... Is to um, is to 
deliver them from the power of darkness and set them free. So in the time of prayer, when we fellowship with God, that is when God begins to communicate his will and what he wants us to do at a particular time when we're praying. You know, that's why it's important when we're praying, we have to also wait to hear. It's a communication. You can't just pray and just go. You pray and you wait for his response. You're talking to him, amen, and he talks back to you. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So you see that most time, when you're so deep in your prayer time, you find out that so it's important you have your pen and your notes beside you. Because in most cases, that's where you hear God direct you. A lot of people praying things, prayer is just asking, 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 asking. No, not just that. Prayer is basically finding the will of God in his word and communicating it back to him, amen? And he reveals to you and he gives you the ability, the strength in order to participate in fulfilling that will and purpose for him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the time when we, we, we become one with him. Amen? amen? It's the time we become one with the Father. Did you know that it's possible for us to be one with him? Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. It's very, very possible. God has done it that way. It's possible for us to be one with him. And I'll show you some few scriptures to... Um... First of all, let's open our Bibles to John chapter 14 and verses 23. Well, James, you read for us, 14.23. John chapter 14, verse 23. Yes. Yeah, that says, Jesus answered, if a person, um, this is amplified. Uh, Jesus answered, if a person really loves me, he will keep my word, obey my teaching, and my father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home a board special dwelling place with him. See, we will come and make our special dwelling place what? with him. Amen? So you become one with God, the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Also, First John chapter 1, verses 3. I talked about fellowship in time of prayer. This is just an introduction to prayer. Pastor G, just, just repeat that scripture first. First John chapter, for chapter one, verses three. It says, that which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that you also may have fellowship with us and truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. Amen? Our fellowship, that word fellowship again here, I say here, is the same word koinonia. It says, it's the same word for partnership. It's the same word for participation. It's the same word for intercourse. Is the same word for communication, is the same word for distribution, is the same word for fellowship. Amen. So the Father distributes even his, his gift to us. The more time we spend when we pray with the Father, the more we are like him all the time. The more we spend time in prayer, the more we spend time communicating to him through prayer, the more we're being transformed. Hallelujah. Amen. We're being transformed. That's why it's important that your fellowship with God on a daily basis is important. It's for your own good. Amen. It's for our own good. 
because there the Lord impacts into our spirit some spiritual gifts. Amen. Hallelujah. Also, look at John chapter 15. He says, if you abide in me and my word abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. This is where you become one with the word of God. So when the word abides in you, hallelujah, it says, if you abide in me and my word abide in you, Jesus Christ is the word and the word is Christ. When we look at the word of God, when the word of God abides in us, the word of Christ abides in us, that we become so in tune with the word and become one with the word of God. Hallelujah. He says we shall ask anything and he will do it. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So there's a possibility for us as believers to be one with the Father. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. In fact, we are one with him. He says, we are, um, um, he says, in him we live, we move, and we have our beings. Hallelujah. So it's important that you know that, this is what I was trying to explain when, when I talked about the Spirit of God living in us. We become one with the Spirit of God. We become one with God because he says this is the this is a fellowship that we have a fellowship with the Father and with our Lord Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit lives in us. The Holy Spirit is the one that makes this happen in us. So if we go anywhere and God wants to visit an wants to visit somewhere. He finds his children wherever they are in that particular location and he sends them there so he can visit that place. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why the body of Christ is the fullness of God on earth today. That's why the body of Christ is the one holding, is the one restricting or stopping the Antichrist to be revealed on earth today because the body of Christ is still here on earth. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. But we'll be next week we'll probably talk about prayer in great details, but I just wanted to just share this with us that Jesus Christ himself says that his house is meant to be a house of prayer. Amen. And first Corinthians chapter 16, 17. Thank you for um, Dickens Maxine. He says he who is joined with the Lord is one spirit with him. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He who is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. That means that your spirit and God's spirit are one. Imagine that. No one that Jesus Christ is greater works than this you shall do. Amen. Greater works than this you should do. Take bold steps. Be conscious of the fact that you are one with the Lord. Be conscious of it. And walk in the revelation of this truth. Go and meditate on this truth. You need to meditate on this truth, meditate on this truth, meditate on this truth. Go over it on and on and on and on and on again, again. Go look for every scripture, every verse of the scripture that talks about our oneness with the Lord and meditate on this truth to the extent that you begin to just want to look for people that are sick and you want to pray for them. Amen. Yes. That's what it's for. It's not meant for, <laughs> amen? That's what it's for. It's for us to show forth God's glory 
on earth. It says, let your light so shine among men that they see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to stop for now, and I'm going to hand over to Bishop right now. Amen. Wow. Praise the Lord. One time again, Pastor Gabriel, thank you so much for teaching us and leading us into the word of God. What we actually done here is to empower one another by the same word that Jesus left. I read amazing scripture. I just want to share it with you, Pastor Gabriel. You were so right. If you read in the book of John, John chapter 15, and I read it and I was blown away. John chapter 16, the Amplify said so nicely. Where's Deacon Maxine? John chapter 16, verse 14, 15. Yeah, 14 and 15. Just read that. It's so amazing that the, the child of God has been empowered because of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Maxine. John chapter 16, verses 14 and 15. Yes, my lovely. He will honor and glorify me because he will take of, receive and draw upon what is mine and will reveal, declare, disclose and transmit it to you. Everything that the Father has is mine. That is what I meant when I said that he, the Spirit, will take the things that are mine and reveal, declare, and disclose, and transmit it to you. Amen. There's your confirmation. Amen. There's your scripture. You should not doubt. Amen. You should not doubt the word of God. Amen. So whatever you ask, it shall be given based. So Jesus actually said, I'm giving it to you what the Father gave me. I'm giving it to who? You and me. So it means that it's been transformed declared, disclosed, transmit. So the spirit of the Lord will reveal and grab it. It's a free gift. Not just Christmas time or your birthday time. The Holy Spirit is a gift from the Lord for Amen. each and every one. So brothers and sisters, we thank Pastor Gabriel. I want us to pray for the man of God. Stretch our hands to him on the screen. Let us just pray for him in your own language. Just pray for the man of come on, just release a word. Just release a word upon his life, on Vicky, on Noah, on Heather's life. Just release a word from God that you would like for you upon his life. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your servant, your son, your friend called Pastor Gabriel, for the anointing that you have empowered into him, planted him, and now it's growing so that he can teach your sons and daughters. And what we have received, right, Lord, tonight is written on a table of our hearts and made us better and wiser and equipped us. I pray today, God, bless the man of God, long life, good health, promotion, increase your blessing prosper him and his family in jesus name we pray amen. Amen. amen amen brothers and sisters we thank every visitor our family who joined us we give god the glory and the honor it will be on youtube thank you media team it will probably be on a youtube on on tomorrow or wednesday look out for it and watch it again and by next week if you got any questions write it down don't forget pastor gabriel and ourselves will try to answer it Amen. God bless you and good night. And thank you once again. We love you and continue to pray for one another. Stay blessed. Bye. Thank you, my brothers and sisters.